Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Zamri. Um, Bismillah rahman rahim uh, Our guest of honor, Yang Mulia, Dr. Hazri Kifli, Vice Chancellor, University of Brunei Darussalam, and distinguished deans from health sciences and uh, medical faculties, University Kabasan, Malaysia, Universitas Indonesia, and University of Brunei Darussalam, and all distinguished speakers and all esteemed participants. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and very good morning. I just would like to, uh, first of all, uh, want to thank the organizer uh, giving me opportunity to share this uh, important topics. Let me share the screen. I hope you can see my screen. So the topic that I'm going to share this morning is about digital transformation in public health. So basically it is quite a general topic, but at the same time in the second part, I will talk about our Brunei Darussalam experience. As um, our guest of honor mentioned, I think this topic is very relevant to this conference theme, which is uh, COVID-19, new learning and new norms themes. So in, during COVID-19, this digital transformation is very much uh, accelerated and we should maintain as new norms. In addition to that, it should be also more progressive. So I will take you through this uh, outline. I will briefly talk about the, what is uh, digital transformation. And it is very important to look at how advanced digital transformation is in our health sector. And also there are opportunities and challenges. So these three, three are just in a very general way. But after that, I will share our experience of digital transformation in Brunei Darussalam, especially education and training for digital public health developments as we all are from the education institutions. So basically, um, what is digital transformation? As, I mean, you can look for a number of definitions, uh, uh, what call uh, from a lot of uh, uh, institutions. And what they say is uh, it is a fundamental change because it is uh, about transformation. And fundamental change in application of digital technology, especially in the area of business technology, business model, and business process. Especially it is about automation and using analytics and AI and so on. And when we talk about business, I think uh, we should remember that our healthcare is also a business. So it is not that this definition is far away from us. And at the end of the day is we are engaging with the digital customers. So nowadays our customers are very digital. But again, looking into this definition, it's a little bit heavy, but I would like to take you go through with a, a little simple explanation about what is digital transformation. So what you see now is this is what CEO dashboard, just an example. So you can see, uh, CEO is a very important leader of an organization or institution. And on his or her dashboard, you can see uh, what you call a, a lot of data and analytics. And it shows you, for example, in this area, it is green color. You need to say that the achievement is quite okay. Here as well, green, but here is a red color, which is indicating something is not uh, uh, right. So just to make it simple when we drive a car on our dashboard also we have all the meters in old days we just have a speedometer and a pure gauge and so on but nowadays is on our dashboard even we can see the all the car tire pressure so in fact all these information that we see on the dashboard are very instant it is not about uh I mean, the tire pressure that we see on the dashboard is not from a day before. 
it is really instant data. So in fact, it is a very good example of a, a digital transformation. I will explain it later. And this is another dashboard. You can see um, on the dashboard, we can see uh, instantly uh, customer satisfaction score, and then customer satisfaction score are in a, in a, from the uh, what do you call the every uh, the monthly data on the uh, CEO dashboard. So the thing is, um, the if we simplified it a little bit about uh, this uh, what do you call the data process. We normally collect the data, and after that, data is transferred, and data are also stored. Then we do data analysis. Then after that, we make report, and after that, our leaders will take action, making decision or some changes, and the cycle will go and uh, on and on again. So here, for example, at the end of the year, when CEO receive. Uh, the annual report, let's say we end the year in December, but CEO received the let, uh, sorry, the annual report in uh, February or March of uh, the next year, I think it is too slow. So digital transformation will make it quite fast, uh, what you call it, with a lot of automation. So if we do data, sorry, the digital transformation, what will happen is, um, in this collecting data, it will be a sensor or digitized data will be collected. And then when transfer the data, normally the least that all we do is we send through the email. In fact, E is quite low tech already, like e-health, telemedicine. In fact, these are also part of the digital tra transformation, but it's very low tech in a way. But nowadays is we really, this area we would call it IoT or connectivity. We're talking about 5G, 6G. I was surprised to see that in fact, people are already start doing research in 8G. So, I mean, in the market we have 5G, but it's research is uh, uh, very much advanced. So about the storage, storage of the data as well. We have a server and uh, even cloud technologies are there. So, these are the transformation that we needed if we are talking about digital transformation. When it comes to this analysis part, these are analytics. So analytics will give us a more insight information and finally decision can be made. So when all the steps and everything are happening automatically, if fully digitized, it means that we have also artificial intelligence centrally play in a role. So, so in, in addition to that is, of course, we need to worry about the security, cyber security, and, and the blockchain technology is one of the advanced technology nowadays. And when we talk about digital transformation, in fact, it is how advanced the transformation is. We might be only in the first, one or two or three circle, meaning to say that we are not that fully utilized uh, digital technology. So it depends on the sectors or organization, how far people have transformed the digitalization. So let's talk about digital transformation in health. Unfortunately, I have to say that it is somewhat behind other sectors. If we look at it in this graph, um, this X exists about digital maturity, and there is a statistic, they call it digital acceleration index. You see the highest sector is the technology and uh, the, the uh, uh, telecommunication and financial institution is there as well. You can see our healthcare is at the most bottom group, unfortunately, and even public sector is worse. So if we are healthcare and public sector, can you imagine how in terms of uh, digital maturity? So this graph also show the success of these institutions uh, also have a relationship with this digital maturity. In fact, this is reported by Boston Consulting Groups in uh, 2020. But let's see, let's see a little bit more uh, that our transformation and 
in recent uh, World Economic Forum, uh, they reported about, they discussed about 10 emerging technology. So in these 10 emerging technology, four are about health and medicine, very interestingly. So what they talk about is detecting diseases from human breath. So they have a semiconductor to detect the gases from the human breath. And another one that they are talking about is the wirelessly monitoring disease to monitor the glucose level from tear. So they have a kind of a contact lens, which have a sensor to measure the glucose level in the eye, uh, on the, what you call it, from the tears. And after that, wirelessly, it will inform to the, the, the insulin injector in the body. So, I mean, the, the, this wireless technology is another one that we are using in the health and medicine. So a lot of, a number of uh, companies are working on these or new emerging technology. Then third and fourth are quite uh, uh, well known. I mean, this is the uh, precision medicine, we call it genetic sequencing. Because of that, the drug that a person needs might not be the same with the drug that another person needed. So because of that, parallel to that, they are coming out with uh, drug production on demand. So people can, the, 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 the company can make the drug for just individual people. I mean, depending on what formula you need it. So these are the four emerging technology in the health or medicine in the coming years. But unfortunately, if you look at, these are very much about diagnosis and treatment at the individual level. So our technology application is not much in the public health, preventive health, and it is not very well analytics or big data and AI and so on. So of course we have digital transformation. Of course, we have a technology application, but relatively compared to other sectors, we are somewhat behind. So we need to do a lot of uh, improvement. And we know that this digital transformation is accelerated due to COVID-19 pandemic. But um, the, so during this pandemic, uh, a lot of investment is done and the data are collected faster and then faster contact tracing. We have all the countries have it. And then from there, we download the data and uh, we do statistical analysis and uh, we have a, a number of uh, epidemiological report. We know quite quickly incubation period of the virus infection and serial uh, interval and R0 and RT kind of thing and mortality. So ministries in various countries, they managed to report even individual day data quite quickly. So these are the improvement because of uh, COVID-19, quite quick digital transformation happened. But still, if we look at it carefully, I mean, what is the level of digital transformation happened we will look at it after this. And these are vid uh, video consultation also uh, uh, more happened than before. So um, there are many more maybe, but these are the, some of the points that I just want to uh, present. And what we realize is these capabilities are there for many, many years. We just only realize and try to use it during this COVID-19 pandemic. So in any way, I mean, we have seen that the digital transformation is accelerated, but how far we have reached. So if you go back to this cycle, just now what I mentioned about all the data collection, we transfer the data very quickly and after the store in the cloud. And after that, we analyze the very basic data day to day. And then that's the reason Ministry of Health in various country can report day-to-day -day data quite quickly. But the analytics wise, it was not very much in-depth automatically happened. We still have to download the data and only information will come out. Then we do analysis, information will come out only after two, three months, sometimes a few months. So then taking the action and all are a bit slow in a way. So. Yes, again, I want to repeat that data, sorry, digital transformation 
that's happened during COVID-19, but at the same time, the level of digital transformation is still a lot more we can do. So we all are education institution as well. So let's look into a little bit on our education sectors. And during COVID-19, we all jumped to this online Zoom teaching. If you look at it, this online Zoom teaching is just about IoT or connectivity part. We not fully utilize what facility we have. In fact, a uh, number of uh, learning management uh, platform that we have, uh, in UBD, we use uh, Canvas. There are a lot of uh, analytics potential, but we're not using all of these analytics. I'll give you an example. This is from uh, my module, teaching module. You can see here in one semester, we have about 12 to 14 weeks of teaching. And in fact, as early as the first two weeks, we can detect already some of the poorly performed students. So because of this learning management platform, keep track of student activities, student performance. Not only that, even the lecturer activities can be seen. So, and, and then when necessary, we can take action quite quickly. So in this module, in this semester, when I contacted the student, after two weeks, these students were quite surprised because how come the lecturer know about their poor performance? So um, these are all the advantages that we have using the analytics. So just Zoom is, uh, in fact, it is quite uh, low tech and a lot of uh, data analytics potential on a learning, learning management system. And because of that, even though after COVID, we cannot just you norm as these all online teaching. We really have to improve much more. We cannot be complacent. And then uh, not just new norms, we have to further transformation is needed. So again, I, I just go back to this circle. So uh, even in education as well, we are just in the first uh, uh, two or three circles. There are many more we can do uh, for the future uh, for the sake. So let's talk about opportunity. So this digital transformation, I mean, a lot of researcher has uh, documented it. It's improved productivity. It also have uh, efficiency because in long term, the cost will be less and less. And there are also more accuracy because of uh, uh, human error will be less, a lot are uh, uh, what you call the machine and automation and better customer engagement. Customers are also quite keen with this digital development. And so it is more sustainable as well because of uh, what you call the, in long term, the cost will be less and then continuous innovation can happen. You can see already in our, let's say mobile phone or all our car day by day or month by month, you can see a lot of uh, features, safety features and so on. So, and then digital transformation is in fact a game changer. If our organization want to be competitive, this is not an optional. It is really, really compulsory or essential for us uh, to utilize. I want to talk about the challenges. What they address, the first main challenges is about leadership. They say leadership commitment and digital transformation planning and strategies. These are the very, very key important things. And the other things they are saying as enabler, leaderships are really, really core part of this digital transformation. So talking about people, we all will realize that there are huge talent gaps, uh, people with a uh, right skill set. We really need it for these all, uh, for digital manpower and also culture gap. And then uh, even in the organization, there are a number of people resistant to change. So this is the mindset problem. 
And the third one is the most important one. This is really multiple, multidisciplinary approach. Most of the time people think that this, this digital transformation is for the, uh, 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 should be done by IT departments. It is, it is not true. It must be a multidisciplinary. It's a complex technology in a way. So our medical people, health science people, working together with the digital science people, academics, and these are quite uh, essential. And others are like limited resources. Even that one, day by day, the cost of these servers and cloud are cheaper and cheaper. Also the gadgets are more and more, uh, what you call the, powerful, but at the same time, the price is not that increasing. And then uh, the data, data security concern is of course, uh, uh, it's a quite, a, quite a challenging thing as well. The third one is, yes, if everything is digitally happen, there may be in the community, those who cannot afford these gadgets or even the connectivity. So this is, uh, inclusiveness is, one thing that people take it as a challenge. So let me move on to our experience in Brunei Darussalam. So of course, during COVID-19, we have uh, what we call digital transformation accelerated in a, uh, what we call a pandemic, through the pandemic mitigation. And I think it's the same in the many countries, we have like a application on our mobile phone, something to do, something to handle this COVID-19 pandemic. So in Brunei, we call it Blue Health application. And it is very, very digitally managed for contact tracing. And also it can easily control the number of people in a building in and out is recorded. So in a, in a supermarket, in a restaurant. So this application is managing and vaccination records and even certificates are all are on our fingertips through this uh, application. And even the, the test, ART, PCR report records, we can see all these things from this application. So these are all the digital transformation happen in the, during COVID-19. Even in the research uh, related to vaccine, full vaccine started to uh, give in. We study the perception of the people about the vaccine, their choice, their concern. And after vaccination as well, the, what we, call, we continuously study the side effects from the vaccination and vaccine efficacy and immunogenicity through this application and through this digital platform. So a lot are very useful. And not only that, at the end of the day, the health information are also very up-to-date information available on this app. So everything, make it into the fingertips of people. But if you look at carefully, these are still around somewhere in the first three or four circle. In terms of the analysis data analytics part, we are still uh, not fully utilized. We have to download the data and we analyze it. And after that, we make report. It will take about a few weeks to months so it will not be instantly we are getting the information on the dashboard. So I'm trying to highlight that the, yes, from the COVID-19, we have accelerated the digital transformation, but there are many more things that we have to do. We must progress it. So here I would like to share our two digital public health projects. We started this project a year ago. However, because of COVID, uh, somehow this project is not a high priority and it, uh, it has a little bit slow. However, what you call it, we are reaching to a quite a significant stage. Our first project is about cardiovascular disease, uh, risk reduction and early detection using machine learning, AI modeling, and using this digital technology. So basically this cardiovascular surveillance system is quite uh, uh, happening already. So what the first step we do is risk categorization. Cardiovascular risk is calculated. Then after that, based on the risk level, we invite the people to come for screening. So further investigation are done, or we may get uh, from this 
further investigation, we may detect the patients. And then in that case is we can treat them. So this is the early detection and treatment. So if they don't have a disease also, it is not a problem. We will give a health promotion. So these steps are still happening. I mean, in terms of the, uh, what you call uh, in a normal process or traditional process, we have a national health screening guideline for non-communicable disease. You can see the document here. So if you look at the cardiovascular, uh, uh, what you call the uh, risk management based on this screening guideline, you can see here how the risks are assessed, calculated using this WHO risk prediction score. And at the same time, based on that risk categorization, we will take the action for further investigation screening. So um, all are spelled out in this guideline. But, uh, sorry, this is, this is the uh, WHO uh, risk uh, assessment. You can see all the chart here. We need uh, six information, six variable about gender, age, systolic blood pressure, total cholesterol level, smoking status, and diabetes mellitus. But can you see how traditional, how low tech that, uh, what you call, uh, uh, we were doing in this health sector? So in this project, what we try to do is we digitize or digitalize the process of all these steps. So the first phase of this project is, of course, we go through all the risk calculators available. And finally, we adopt to use a WHO calculator, which is currently Brunei has adopted. So we developed this digital platform. Just now the Brew Health apps that Brunei is using. On this app, just with this WHO six information, we can calculate the risk already. So this risk for a person is calculated automatically. It is not that the person have to do something. So then after that, based on risk categorization, the person will be invited to, to go for further investigation to see doctors or nurses, screening nurses. So based on the, 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 the risk level, the screening procedure is also different. So there will be a little, there, there is a little bit AI here. I mean, based on the risk level, when we give the appointment to go to come for screening, and we will, so, so those, those who are high risk, we will ask them to come quickly. But those who are low risk, they will come a little bit in the later stage. At the same time, if the clinic has a lot of caseload, the invitation will be a little bit slow. So quite intelligently, it will manage. And at the end of the day is after they do screening and after they were detected the disease, early detection happened, treatment is happened. On this platform, there are a lot of data will be accumulated. So after a lot of data are accumulated, at the beginning, what we'll do is we will download the data and we will try to have our own risk modeling using the machine learning and AI modeling. So once we have this modeling, we are pretty sure that this Brunei-based data, data-driven model will be much more accurate than current WHO chart, which has only six variables. So once this modeling is adequately, uh, what you call uh, sensitive and specific, valid, we'll replace the WHO. Uh, uh, a risk calculator. It's not only that, after we replace it, um, whenever we have uh, more and more new data coming in that platform, automatically it will analyze, remodel it. And then this newer model will be replaced. Automatically it will happen. So this is AI is there in this process. So of course, at the end of the day, the final phase of this project will be evaluating the patients and doctors' acceptance, incidents really reduced or not, early detection really happened or not, mortality reduced or not, and so on. So the whole thing, we call it digital health risk management system and prevention and early detection. And a little bit in a simple form, so 
we assess risk with WHO uh, calculator, and then we do screening, and then we do treatment. All these things are on the uh, platform, and the data will be analyzed with machine learning, and we will replace this risk calculator. So this circle is continuously happening because the more data come in, the more accurate model we will get for Bruneian population, then it will replace automatically. So for the uh, researchers, just uh, uh, sit and uh, what you call uh, watch what is happening. So in this project, we have here uh, seven researchers from health science. These two researchers are from digital science, all are from University Science Malaysia. And we are working together with four clinicians, specialists from Ministry of Health. And we have already one PhD student. He is a medical doctor from Egypt. So this project has been going and we have built the what you call platform and the platform will launch, uh, I hope in a month time. And also we have published this, uh, what you call it, the first phase, uh, going through all the uh, digit, uh, sorry, the risk calculators. And, but of course, finally we use the WHO calculator. And opportunity that what we see is in Brunei for this digital uh, uh, public health research, we have a very strong commitment from His Majesty government, Ministry of Health, Ministry of Finance and Economy, a lot of financial supports, uh, uh, I mean, the, the adequate financial support, we got it because high priority for the digital transformation. Another advantage that we have in Brunei is we have a single electronic medical record system. 90% of our, more than 90% of our patients are on this platform. So that cover all the government hospitals and clinics, and we call it Brewheim and Brew Health. Another opportunity why we can do this kind of research is our very close collaboration. And in UBD, our health science, academics and digital science, we are very close and we work together. And not only that university, UBD and Ministry of Health also, it is only about 10, 15 minutes drive. And uh, the, our local digital tech company, EVIT. So all of us are working together for this project. And we have a, this close collaboration is a key opportunity for us to, uh, uh, for the success of this project. And we talk about it for digital transformation one of the very key important part is talents and right skill set. You can see already in a, what you call it, other sectors, digital transformation is much, much more advanced. For example, in engineering, the training and education in engineering is, engineers are already trained for digital science. In their curriculum, it is already embedded for in the past 10, 15 years. So engineers are, they themselves can do digital developments. And of course, they still have to work with digital science experts. But our health science or medical professional people, we know little about digital science. So we have a larger gap, but we still can work together with digital science people. But when there is a larger gap, it slowed down a bit. So I think the education is quite important. And UBD is now offering what we call it Master of Digital Public Health. Of course, previously we have Master of Public Health, but working together with the, our digital science academics, this is the new master that we are offering. It will start in January, 2023. It's fully online and lifelong learning mode, meaning to say that people in workplace still can take this module. The, there may be about one hour a week of synchronous uh, communication with the lecturers and the student, but that will be in the evening time. So it is very, very flexible, uh, I mean, to take this kind of uh, 
program. And the other thing is in this program, I just would like to show you a little bit. We have six digital science module. Of course, I don't want to highlight about the public health modules. I'm sure many of us know it. So these, these three are the uh, core modules. And if people are more interested, there are more option modules are there for the students to continue. The other message that I want to give is, it is not necessary for people to take this Master of Digital Public Health program. They just can come and take these digital science module and they just go away, it doesn't matter. So people already have, a, when they want to do reskill and upskill in uh, people working in the Ministry of Health, already have a Master of Public Health, they just join us taking this digital science modules and they will get the right skill set, I believe. So we welcome all the students, our potential students in the region. And we have already our very first PhD student. Uh, yeah, he is doing in this, just now what I mentioned, the digital public health research. And we hope to get more PhD student and master students in this digital public health area. So, let me wrap up a little bit. Uh, the uh, digital transformation is accelerated, true. I mean, uh, during the COVID-19 time, but still a lot to go. I hope you see it. I mean, the, what do you call the, there are the, the, all these technologies are there, potential are there, but we are not fully utilize it. So, so far that we have seen in our health sector is quite low technology. And it is, multidisciplinary is the key. And we also have to narrow down the gap of the, what you call the, uh, the, the distance between the health science people and uh, uh, what you call the digital science. Because of that, uh, the education and training are also very important. We really have to look back our curriculum. Currently is um, even including the statistics module, in a medical or health science uh, program, we are still struggling. In fact, we have to go more than that. I think digital science modules are really, really important. Like uh, our Dean from University Kabasan in Malaysia mentioned. And it has to go together with research and development as well. For example, when students are taking our modules, I mean, our digital public health, master program. And because of we have digital public health research uh, going on, we have something to show them. So um, these are all we have to, I mean, the develop in parallel, not just research and development, also education and training. With that, I would like to welcome you to explore our research and participate in our teaching and training please visit Brunei, in, especially in 2023. Thank you very much, everyone.